Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Rachel here, AKA The Nail Therapist. If you don't know my work, I specialize in restorative nail and foot care using all natural and non-toxic products. And if you enjoy my videos and gain something from them, please consider subscribing and hit that bell for a notification when I post my next video. Today is a doozy. We are gonna look at a woman who, as you can see, has not had much care with her feet for a while. And so we're gonna look at pincer nails, thick nails, and ram's horn nails. So stay tuned. So this sweet lady came to me with her husband. Um, her daughter set up the appointment for both of them. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, this woman has a pretty advanced case of dementia, but she uh, knew what, she, what was happening and understood everything that I was doing, so that was good. Um, and I started her dry with her pedicure because for me, I can clip the nails better and and debulk them better with a dry nail rather than one that's been soaking in the water for some time. And then after I debulk, I will go ahead and soak so I can clean the nail and around the nail a lot better. And with elderly clients, I like to assess the integrity of the skin with them being dry because once they start soaking, the skin gets softer and it's way easier for me to accidentally clip them. So by pushing the, the skin back a little bit with the cuticle pusher like you just saw me doing, I can assess just how frail the skin is. And with this particular client, it is pretty thin. So I know now extra care needs to be taken so that I don't accidentally nip her or um, graze the e-file over her skin. Because even just with a diamond bit, it might be too aggressive um, and end up uh, tearing her skin in some way. Before I started clipping, you saw me drag the sidewall cleaner around the nail to assess where the hyponychium was attached. And I took the nipper a little bit at a time and just clipped a little bit with the tips of the clipper. Um, this does a couple of things. When the nail is really curved like it is here, it's hard to get a full clip anyway. So it's easier to go in there and just take little bits at little different angles that you can see me doing. The other thing is there's a lot of pressure that occurs if you try and clip across the whole nail when it's so curved like this and it can cause the nail to sort of pull away upwards from the nail bed which can be uncomfortable for the client. So to avoid that I take little tiny nips and I keep trying to assess exactly where that skin is attaching because I, I want to remove as much of the length as I can before I start to e-file. But I don't want to clip her hyponychium because that can leave her in a lot of discomfort and obviously it might start bleeding and we don't want that. So you might be thinking like, Rachel, you didn't finish taking down the length. And yes, I know that. <laughs> um, I don't always go for all the length right away because sometimes it's easier to take off more of the length after they've soaked a little bit and after I've thinned them out a little bit. So I'm taking the carbide bit to her thicker nails and I'm going in the forward direction right now from right to left and from top to bottom. And this helps me to thin out the nail and um, make it nice and smooth on the surface for her. And as you can see, there's um, a deep curve um, that is stretching across the whole width of the nail. And in a minute, I'll point it out to her. Obviously, maybe not obviously, but she didn't know where it came from. Um, sometimes when you see a deep curve that goes all the way across the nail and it's only in one place, that's indicative of something traumatic happening, like um, 
uh, some sort of trauma being dropped on the nail uh, or something like that. Or if you see that in multiple nails, it could be associated with some sort of illness that occurred that attacked her immune system pretty hard. Um, and so because it was only on this nail, I'm guessing it's more of a physical trauma outwardly than something inwardly attacking her. Um, but it didn't really matter in the end. Um, when you have a client who can't tell you exact histories, it's, it's almost, you know, it's not anything you can really do to help, um, teach them or educate them, um, because you don't really know if you're getting accurate information. But what I was telling her here was that as the nail grows out further, because there's a, a large indentation across the nail, as it grows out and gets further to the free edge, it might happen that it could break off earlier than what it would naturally break off just because it's already cracked through a few of the layers. Okay, so the goal on this nail is to, one, thin it out so it's not so um, humped up and, and thick. But also you can tell it curves quite a bit. And so we want to file it in a way that gives the illusion that it grows straight. And um, we do that by first thinning it out and then clipping it down as far as we can and then using the file to create an imaginary a lateral border that you know isn't there anymore and as she as the nail grows it'll continue to curve but at least for now we can you know give the illusion that it's not if you don't use an e-file like say you're caring for somebody um, in your family who has these issues and you aren't trained with an e-file, it is possible to still thin out the nail using a, a regular emery board. Uh, use, I used to use an emery board exclusively until last year. And so I used a 100 grit on one side and 180 on the other. And you just have to put some elbow grease into it. You're going to be filing across the top of the nail, along the sides of the nail. The danger of using an emery board especially on an elderly client with thinner skin, is that the sides of the nail of the emery board can often be very sharp and it can catch the skin and cause little slices in the skin, which are one, uncomfortable, but two, open the skin to infection. And that's not good. So if you are trained with an e-file, it is gonna be a lot more safe to use an e-file than an emery board, especially on um, clients who have health issues like maybe diabetes or they're on blood thinners or maybe they've got cancer or they've gone through chemo. Anything that's gonna put their immune system in a compromised position, um, you want to uh, use a safer method to thin out the nails if you can. This toe was a little tricky to file because as you can see, she's got a deformity in this toe. That um, It's basically like a trigger finger. There's a, a tendon on the underside of the, of the toe that's um, got uh, restrictions in it and it won't let me flatten out the toe. So I had to kind of work around the other toe to make sure I could get the nail fully uh, filed in the right, uh, the right way. So. You just have to work with what you got. Sometimes you got to work around things. That's what make this work so fun.
Okay, so I started using Sachet Callus and Cuticle Softener on some of my clients and their um, cuticles. Um, if they have a large buildup or like her, you know, she has very thin skin and I wanted to make sure I got all of the cuticle off without really bothering the integrity of the skin. So I put that on her um, toe. I'm going to let it sit on her nail while I work on the other foot. Right now, her other foot is still out of the water. It is on, I have a red light panel that I rest my client's feet on before I put them in the foot bath. So it's just sitting out on the red light um, while I'm working on this foot. And then by the time I go back to um, mess with her cuticles again, they'll be super soft and really easy to remove. And just FYI, it doesn't take that long for the sachet to actually work to remove the cuticle. I just was moving along with my pedicure and so it's gonna sit on there for a little while. But I could remove her cuticle within 10 seconds um, of applying the sachet and have it still be just as effective. So I am putting pressure on the top of her nail because her nails are so hard that when I go and try and clip them, I can see it sort of trying to bend the nail and, and flatten it. And like I was saying before, it puts a lot of pressure on the nail bed. So by applying that downward pressure on the top of the nail, it reduces what she feels as pressure being uh, applied when I'm clipping and it's way more comfortable for her and it reduces any kind of damage that the clipping might be inflicting on the nail bed. So I had to bring out the big guns for her nails because of how hard they were. <laughs> I don't use these very often and they are quite intimidating to look at. They aren't crazy to, you know, what they're using, it's, it's fine, but um, they are intimidating. And so you have to make sure that the client is not scared. Um, but yeah, I had to, had to break those big guys out to get through this nail. In my head, I'm um, thinking about Tobro guy, and he always, he always says, you know, just a little bit at a time, just a little bit at a time. <laughs> so I'm like, Rachel, just, just take a little bit at a time.
Okay, so once again, I'm using the carbide bit. I got this bit from Erica's ATA. It has a safety top on it, which I love because I can run the bit really close to the cuticle and it never, the, the, the actual teeth of the bit don't actually hit the, the skin. It's just a smooth top. So it's really great, especially in cases like this. I recommend it, highly recommend it. One of my favorite things uh, when I'm using bits like this on clients is watching the ridging of the nail just get completely smoothed out. And of course with her, she's got excessive dryness where she had that polish on for like probably nine months or so, if not longer. So it just comes right off when you're um, smoothing out the nail or taking out bulk. It's just really fun for my OCD you know, ADD sort of personality to be able to have that really instant gratification. You're going from something that's unkempt to something that's very beautiful. I love it. I just want to take a moment and say thank you guys for tuning in and watching. I really hope that what I bring to the table is informative and helpful. And if there's ever anything that you want me to go more into detail with, please let me know. I, I love learning. I love educating. And um, if there's anything that I'm not mentioning or you want me to go, you know, talk about more about on, um, just leave it in the comments and I will be happy to address them. But again, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and any other time you come and stop by. I really, um, I really, really do appreciate it. All right, at this point, my dear client has been soaking in the foot bath for just a few minutes. So I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning around the nails and under the nails before I do a little bit more thinning and shaping.
This nail was a little harder for me because it was so pinched, I could not see where the skin exactly was attached. So that's why I'm going in so, you know, little bits at a time and keep going back in with that um, sidewall cleaner because I just could not quite see exactly where the skin was attaching and I did not want to cut her. So um, yeah, it's going to take a little bit of extra effort and time to get this nail where I want it to be. Now that I have trimmed the nail back as far as I feel like I can probably get it, I'm going to come back with the carbide bit to do a little bit more thinning out because there is still quite a bit of bulk there. And then I will shape it a little bit more with the nail file.
You could probably tell that there's something going on with the snail. It does have like a crumbly appearance and there's some yellowing to the nail. So we're suspicious there could be some fungus. Um, and typically I would send her home with something to do daily. Um, but like I said, because of her mental condition, it just didn't make any sense for me to, to pile that on for her. It's not out of control. And um, there's a potential that her husband could help her with it. But honestly, I just... I didn't, I don't know if it would be worth it in the end, so I didn't really discuss it with her. It may look to you guys that I'm cutting down the sides of the nail, but I promise you I'm not. I'm I'm going to I'm angling the nail down where the free edge allows me to. So once I get the the sides, the corners to the length I want, then I come back and either trim the rest of the nail across or use the file to um, shorten the nail to where I trim the uh, corners to. Now on this particular nail, what I'm doing, because it's hard to see, but the side of the nail on the right side has like this downward curve. And so all I'm doing with the nippers is trying to cut the nail so that it lays in the nail groove the way it's supposed to. Um, and then I'm going to come back with the file and um, file from the underside, like at a 45 degree angle, uh, and move it up towards the 90 degree angle to get a good shape of the nail as it's supposed to be, not as it has been growing.
So this final step for me is using the nib bit from Erica's ATA. It's a diamond bit and just very gently going over the uh, borders of the nail to remove any um, remaining cuticle that might be hanging on for dear life. We want to remove them, get it out of there. And then after that, we'll do some exfoliating. Now I'm going to tell you guys something. I was so mad at myself. Someone in a previous video commented that they would like for me to show them how I remove corns. I thought, great idea. I'd love to do that. Really hope I have somebody come in soon. Well, lo and behold, this woman comes in and she's got three corns vertically down the center of her, uh, the ball of her foot, which you'll see in a little bit. I took the time to set up the camera at an angle that would capture the entire process only to find out later <laughs> when I was uploading the video that I pressed pause instead of record when I was doing the removal process. And let me tell you something, guys, it was so good. It went perfectly. I thought this is going to be awesome. I'm going to have such amazing content. <laughs> and then I lost it. I didn't have it. Oh, I was so mad at myself. So sorry, guys, I messed up on that one. I will do better next time. Okay, see, here's me setting up the shot. Didn't know I was recording at this point. Right now, I thought I was on pause. And then when I hit what I thought was the continue to record button, and I actually hit the pause button. And that's, that's all I have. That's all I had for you guys. <laughs> so mad. <laughs> I promise you when I have a, another corn client, I'm going to record it and I'm going to have a whole video just on the corn. And the rest of the video I thought I was recording, it was actually on pause too. So I didn't get the, um, to the second foot um, to show exactly how I cleaned it. So yet again, <sighs> Rachel, what are you doing? But anyway, you could see at least the before and afters. And I think it was a pretty incredible transformation. I was very happy with the result and so was she. I hope you enjoyed the video and listening to me rant. <laughs> And I will be back again in the next week or two to give you another one. Until then, have a wonderful day. And thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.